look at translations here. And again, not necessarily the properties now, just the physical doing of how do we do a translation. And um, here we have a translation. Let's zoom in on the notation a little bit here. It says 2 comma negative 3. And that's a vector. So what it's telling us is to go 2 to the right and 3 down. So J goes 1, 2 to the right, 1, 2, 3 down. J prime, oops, sorry. J prime will be down here. 2 to the right moves H, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Here would be H prime. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. This would be K prime. So when we connect to these, uh, we get this nice situation where all points have moved the same distance and the same direction. The shape will always be exactly the same look and feel as the original, but everybody has moved by that nice vector. You see it there? There's, I'm going to draw the arrow vectors in the first one. Everybody went two to the right and three down. Two to the right and three down to create our image. J prime, K prime, N prime. In this case, it says, uh, again, the notation is small here, so zoom in. It says, translate everything six to the right and zero down or up. So this just moves everybody six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, I just record those locations, uh, mark them in using my ruler, straight edge here, mark them in. And this would be F prime, G prime, E prime. Nice and easy. All right, this one, um, I got this one I won't do just for sake of time. I think you got the idea. Let me just draw the vector of where it would move, though. This moves everything left three down one. So left three down one would be an arrow that would be left, sorry, what did it say? Three, one, two, three, down one. So the, the vector that everybody would move on is this one here. Let me zoom out so you can see it. So everybody in this diagram in the entire plane would slide three left and one down. So again, one, two, three, and would land here. One, two, three, down one. L would land there. L prime. One, two, three, down one. This would be M prime. L prime. One. Well, I ended up doing it anyways. The arrow is sometimes used as a way to denote translation, direction, and distance. Uh, the arrow does not have to be connected to the shape. It just has to be out there to describe the motion everybody takes in terms of that. So this is what the final result would look like. So arrows uh, describe the vector. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to describe what's taking place in a translation is, is called a coordinate rule. So they tell us that a translation takes place from A to A prime, and they want to know how did it slide there? What was the translation? So you can see that we went from negative 4 to negative 1. So we added 3 to our x value. And we went from 1 to, to 3, and we added 2 to the y value. So this is a coordinate rule. This says add 3 to every x and add 2 to every y. This can also be described as the vector 3 right and 2 up. So this is called computation or coordinate rule uh, notation. This is vector notation. So 7 went to 3, so that means we went uh, left 4. And 1 went to 0, that means we went down 1. And again, this is the coordinate setup, and this is the vector setup of the same thing. Finally, uh, this is just doing a little bit of back and forth here using coordinate rules or vectors to figure things out. This says we have the point A and here's A prime. Uh, here's the coordinate rule for the translation. Left 6, so that puts us at negative 7. And back 1 puts us at 1. Ooh, this is cool. I have the image. I want the pre-image. 
So if I'm at 8, uh, I must have started at 8 because x didn't change. If I'm at negative 5, um, I went negative 4 to get there. So I'd actually go add 4 to go back. And so I would be at negative 1. If that was too quick, what you can do, we covered this in an earlier objective, you can just say y minus 4 came out to be negative 5 and solve that little problem and you find out what it was to make it end up at negative 5. These next ones are the same except the notation is vector notation. So they give you uh, the motion in the plane. This is left 1, down 1, down 2, sorry. So if I'm going to perform left 1, down 2, that would be 8 and negative 7 and so on. Let's just do the last question here, and then we'll let you try out some translations. Um, this gives us a rule, and then it gives us another rule. So two things happen. Well, think about it this way. I'll just draw two translations. Let's say we translated here first to get a prime. And then let's say we translated over here to get a double prime. If you want the resultant translation, you could just say, hey, why don't we just do this translation right here and you'll get the results. The easy way to do that is if you went left 3 and left 7 you went a total of left 10. And if you went up 5 but down 1 you still went up 4. So this would be the resultant translation. Just basically add the 